This is Fred Wall, the Visa Coach, and today's topic is how can a U.S. citizen get married in the Philippines? Visa Coach, fast, easy, and personal. I am Fred Wall, the Visa Coach, and I am known for the personal one-on-one -on -one relationship well that we share. That's you, me, and your partner as we work together as a team to overcome the many challenges of immigration. Don't risk your happiness. Don't go this course alone. Alone, it's far too easy to make mistakes that cause tears, delays, and expensive denials. Well, do just pick up the phone and speak with me directly so that you and I can get to know each other. And this is the free complimentary consultation I talk about later. If we are compatible, well, that will be the beginning of our beautiful relationship to get you the immigration approvals that you need. Now, this is what two of my clients, Tyler and Hazel, had to say. Hazel comes from the Philippines, and I helped her get her spouse visa. And this is what she wrote. I am so pleased that my husband have chosen your service and as a result of your very organized, well-detailed preparations and your very clear and precise step-by-step -step instructions in all of our paperwork, which leads us to a successful immigrant visa approval. This saves us from all the trouble and stresses during the interview. And having said that, well, the key to a seamless and successful visa interview and approval lies on how well one's paperwork are prepared. Therefore, we highly recommend your excellent service and rest assured, nothing can go wrong, but truly a dream can come true for us. We appreciate all of your time, support, and quick turnaround in accommodating all of our questions. Each time we had any doubts or confusions. Thank you, Mr. Fred Wall. Well, Tyler and Hazel, you are most welcome. Now, let's talk about how can a U.S. citizen get married in the Philippines? Now, I am pleased to help my clients get both, well, fiance and spouse visas to bring their loved ones home to the USA. And almost half of the couples that I work with, well, they come from the Philippines. It turns out that the U.S. Embassy in Manila is the busiest of all U.S. embassies around the world. And they process tens of thousands of requests for visas to travel to the USA every year. Now, the Philippines is a wonderful country. The people are very kind, very gentle. In fact, they are awesome to know and to be friends with. English, well, is taught in the schools. So most Filipinos can speak some English. And, well, they like the USA. They like Americans. And most Filipino families have some relatives who have already immigrated to the USA who are telling them it's a great place, come on in. This all makes the Philippines a very popular place for an American to find romance. Well, I know that I did. Now, if you have fallen in love with someone from the Philippines, basically you have two choices to bring him or her to the USA. Now, either get engaged and then apply for a Viance fiancé visa or marry and apply for a spouse visa. Most choose the fiancé visa route because it is much faster than the spouse visa. And currently, well, and this will change over time, currently it takes about eight to nine months to get a fiancé visa from Manila, compared to, well, 14 to 18 months to get a spouse visa. That doesn't make sense, you say. Uh, married should be faster. Well, yes. But the way these processes work, a fiancé visa is considered a non-immigrant visa, good only for a short 90-day visit just in time to meet potential in-laws and see Disneyland. And if a wedding occurs, 
than to remain permanently in the USA. But it's a big if, and the system assumes the fiancé might return back to the Philippines. So officially, it is only for a short stay. And because of that, the visa does not need as much vetting as much as a spouse visa does. That's because a spouse visa, on the other hand, is considered regular immigration. Now that means the applicant is not applying for a short stay, but is applying to stay in the USA permanently. So there is more vetting, more examination, and the final approval includes approval for the green card and permanent residency. The spouse visa allows your spouse to enter the USA and expects her to stay permanently. Now, despite the spouse visa needing much more time, for many, the attraction of marrying your love sooner and having a wedding ceremony in a tropical paradise among your spouse's family, friends, and neighbors is still very attractive. And for those who want to get married in the Philippines, here is how. Now, getting married in the Philippines takes planning, and it takes some time. You will need a minimum of 10 days. If you're flying in for a short stay, and just the 10 days, you will have to plan your time carefully. The reason it takes at least 10 days is because in order to get married, one first needs to obtain a marriage license. And applying for a marriage license in the Philippines, well, is somewhat like applying to buy a gun in the USA. There is a 10-day cooling off period between when you file your application until the earliest while well, you can get to the altar. Applying requires you and your fiancé to go to the court or mayor's office and present the following documents. Your passport, your passport if you're the foreigner, and if she has one, yes. If not, everyone's birth certificates, proof of termination of previous marriages, and a document called Certificate of Legal Capacity to Contract Marriage. And as in the most recent update from Philippines, each applicant, even the American now, must provide a Certificate of No Marriage, a CENOMAR issued by the Philippines government the PSA offices. The CENOMAR can be ordered in advance and can be ordered online and takes about well, 10 days to be issued. So it's best to order this document well in advance of your arrival in the Philippines. But the certificate of legal capacity to contract marriage, well, it's not so easy for an American to obtain. The certificate of legal, a lot of words, the certificate of legal capacity to contract marriage is a document issued by, well, a government body that states the holder is currently not married and therefore is free to marry someone else. Many countries, like the Philippines, maintain a central registry of marriages. So this document would normally there be issued by their government, their government authority. However, since the USA does not have any central registry of marriages, it's really impossible to find any US, well, federal, state, or local government office that could issue you this kind of statement, saying that they've checked their records and you are not married and you are eligible to marry. So, what can you do? Well, you know, to the rescue, the US Embassy is there for you. Uh, they cannot issue a document that categorically categorically states that you are not married. But what they can do is allow you to raise your hand and swear to the counselor officer that you are not married. And he can then issue a statement that he has witnessed you making your sworn statement. The document he gives you is called an affidavit in lieu of a certificate of legal capacity to contract marriage. Both the counselor section at the U.S. Embassy in Manila and the consulate satellite office in Cebu will do this for you. But do be aware, however, that a few of the local towns, uh, such as Quezon City, Makati City, Davao City, and maybe others, might not accept this affidavit, 
So best is to find out in advance, and if necessary, well, choose the next town over to get married in. Marriage licenses are good for 120 days, and the wedding, well, doesn't need to occur actually in the same town that issued the license. So maybe you can move around a little bit if necessary. Now, after you bring all the required documents to the court or mayor's office and pay the license fee, after the 10-day waiting period, the marriage license becomes valid and you can marry. And you can do this in a church or in a civil marriage in front of a judge or mayor. To marry within only 10 days, we're going to talk about it now, you must plan your trip carefully. And for the shortest stay, well, you would plan to arrive in Manila or Cebu in the morning. Take a taxi cab direct from the airport to the consulate or embassy. Get the affidavits of, in lieu of, of certificate of legal capacity to contract marriage. And then pushing on, get in the taxi cab and push on to the local mayor's or judge's office before they close the same day. That's all on the first day. And then on the 10th day, you go back and you can pick up your approved marriage license and marry the same day. When you're planning your whirlwind 10 day trip, keep in mind that government offices are closed on weekends and holidays. And so plan your arrival and departure accordingly. And of course, you know, while a 10 day trip, including the wedding is possible, it would be prudent and more relaxing if you give yourself a few more days overall to your, to your visit. This would give you a cushion in case of well, delayed flights, traffic jams, and so on. Now after the wedding, when can you bring your new spouse to the USA? Well, sorry, but unlike what we saw in the old movies, an American can't arrive, sweep a beautiful foreign lady off her feet, and throw her over his shoulder and board Pan Am back to the USA. Sorry, but once the honeymoon is over, you will most likely be returning to the USA alone. To bring your new spouse to the USA, you need to apply through US immigration. And of course, I can help. Usually, we start working together well before your wedding. Uh, this is in order to get all of our ducks in a row. But doing this, even by doing this, still the earliest we can actually submit your application to the U.S. government will be a few months after the wedding. This is because in order to successfully apply, your application needs to include a copy of your marriage certificate issued by the Philippines federal government. Sadly, in the past, the Philippines has been plagued by fraudulent or counterfeit civil documents. And in order to make civil documents trustworthy, the Philippines government has instituted a national government office called the Philippines Statistics Authority, PSA for short. PSA's job is to verify and vet civil documents such as birth, death, and marriage certificates. Now, even though soon after the wedding, the local judge or mayor will issue you a local marriage certificate, that document is not accepted by U.S. immigration. Instead, only the PSA version is acceptable. And it takes three months or so for the PSA to issue their own marriage certificate. So, once the wedding takes place, the time it takes to bring your spouse to the USA will be about, well, three months to obtain the PSA marriage certificate, plus currently another 14 to 18 months at US immigration before the visa is issued. And that then finally life together in the USA can begin. Now, because it takes such a long time to bring your spouse to the USA, Many couples, well, they decide not to marry in the Philippines and instead choose to marry in the USA. With the fiancé visa, 
you, once the face-to-face -face meeting has taken place, well, a couple can usually get permission to uh, get their visa and come to the USA in only eight to nine months. Now, what can you do to speed the process? Well, first of all, don't wait to bring visa coach, bring me on board. Uh, typically, we should start working together months in advance of your wedding trip. Uh, and then this way, we can get most of the logistics out of the way. And on your trip to get married, I can arm you with detailed instructions and checklists of well, what basis you need to touch during your trip and what to bring back in the way of high quality evidences to make your visa application strong. Strong application means it's likely to be processed as smoothly and quickly as possible. And then, well, we'll cra I'll craft your application to Visa Coach's high standards and leave a placeholder to insert the PSA marriage certificate the moment it is issued. This was Fred Wall, the Visa Coach. Now please like or add your comments to this video. And then, well, go to visacoach.com and sign up for the Visa Coach monthly newsletter. Each month, it is full of tips and advice on marriage-based immigration. And, well, it's free of charge. And when you sign up, you get, well, two free eBooks that I've written. 120 K-1 visa interview practice questions and, well, five things you must know before starting your visa. Finally, when you are ready to get started, well, call for your free introductory consultation and speak with me directly. Before starting your immigration adventure, before entering an arcane maze of rules, regulations, and procedures, before committing yourself to a risky path that could mean an end to your happiness, speak with the Visa Coach and ask for his free consultation. He listens to you to learn the red flags and strengths of your case, your eligibility and goals. He will suggest which visa is right for you, the best strategy to get it, and how soon your love can join you. The friendly advice and wisdom he'll freely share with you might make the difference between approval and denial and could save you months or years of loneliness and separation. What have you got to lose? Book your free consultation today.